walk in Then we thought we'd sit down together and play a game in the atrium Hello everyone, this is the atrium and we're playing the Yog. Yog. Alright, so Gonna choose some characters here Yeah We're gonna go with what we went with before The Yog will be here in six weeks no one expects it. Not a one of us. We just keep on living our lives week by week, unaware. What is the yog? So, you're up first. <clears throat> For week one? Yep. Uh, what did I do? What did I, do? <laughs> I think I'm going to start with the alchemy tower again. I'm going to... Because <laughs> I like to clean. You spend the week cleaning up noxious chemicals. You're paid one wealth for your labor and gain one physique and one magic. One day you get cries for help coming from the next room. Running over to investigate, you see that the alchemists there have accidentally created an ooze monster. Oh man. How do you dispatch the ooze? Punch the ooze into submission or blast the ooze with magic? Come on, this is, is there really a, a choice for me? I'm gonna punch the ooze. Gotcha. You pummel the ooze into nothing but a puddle remains. You gain two physique. Nice. The acid from the <laughs> the ooze sears your skin. I had a feeling. You lose one physique. So a net law, a net gain of one. Yeah. The alchemy apply uh, apply a cream that heals it, but your hand just doesn't feel the same. You'll never play the piano. <laughs> you see my hands, dude. That, that my hand, those <laughs> hands are huge. That dude will like just smash the key. Yeah. Your your guy looks like a hard labor kind of guy. I'm gonna go dancing. <laughs> you spend the week. Attending fancy gatherings. I'm gonna call him Eric. Gain two charm and one finesse. One day you overhear the jester tell a joke to a group of people. Everyone laughs, but you didn't understand the joke at all. Ask for an explanation, try to figure out the joke on your own. Well, you never ask. Yeah, you just kind of. Yeah. yeah. You never manage to figure it out. You've begun coming into terms with the fact that your sense of humor is lacking. <laughs> Being more self aware, you manage to exude an aura of confidence. You gain one charm. Huh. <laughs> They say the last time it came, the Yogg devoured houses whole, stole lives, tore families and family members apart. But that was so very long ago. Hmm. <clears throat> well, I think I'm going to go to the slums. And I'm going to fight crime because I'm not a pickpocketer. You should fight crime. Look at that. My, just my mustache of awesome and I've got like the green hornet style like he does it's like a green mask you spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals I'm a vigilante you gain one mind one physique and one finesse uh, one night you hear cheering coming from the alleyway peering in you see a crowd of men cheering uh, on oh. a dog violently reach, uh, ripping it no they don't even want to that's awful one of the men spots you and, and uh, asks, Oi! Would you like to participate in our little betting game? <laughs> Is that too much for you? <laughs> I'm gonna stop the dog fights. Fuck you guys. You try convincing the gamblers the dog uh, fighting is wrong. Your words fall deaf on deaf ears. Very quickly, <laughs> they, qu they get quite angry with you. One of them walks up to you and pulls out a knife. Ooh. You don't feel uh, you don't feel you've got the strength or speed to match this guy. What? You run away hoping he won't follow. Snap! Oof. I'm gonna come back. You gonna come back? I'm gonna come back. Um, I had fun at the palace. Uh, let's go help some patients. N nothing bad ever comes from helping the sick. I like that he's got popped collar. It's not pop. It, he's got a nice fancy jacket. All right. <laughs> I gain two mind and earn one wealth. One day, while in the maternity ward, you notice a woman about to give birth. The baby she births is no ordinary baby, however. Its skin is pitch black and shiny, and its eyes glow like an orange flame. It wrestles itself from the doctor's hands and tries to fly away. Stop that demon, yells the doctor. Uh, why am I always in situations where like nothing is useful? Um, I'm going to put yourself between... Oh, that was probably bad. <laughs> The demon is gonna use you. Barrels past you and out the door, flying into the night sky. Do a barrel roll. All right. It was honest in a heartbeat. Or sore the sun. So the stories go. The earth shook. The air went still. Huh. Well. Let's see. I'm gonna go to the arena and 
I'm gonna compete because it's it's what I like to do. That's a, I like, I like the, the juxtaposition of the guy you're facing. Like I know he's supposed to be holding it, but it looks like the trident or four pro five prongs. Oh my god! It's a fork. <laughs> he's using a someone's a large overcompensating. Fork. <laughs> it looks like it's coming from between his legs, though. Yeah, it does. It really does. <laughs> Yeah, you spend the week fighting brutes in the arena. You gain two physique and one finesse. F finesse. Yeah, finesse. No, you're light on your feet. <laughs> uh, during the match, another warrior's we uh, weapon is knocked from their grasp. You barely manage to avoid it. With a sickening crunch, it destroys the knee of a nearby, uh, nearby bystander. Oh, man. He accuses you of causing him harm by not stopping the flying weapon. He takes you to court. Offer to settle and to defend yourself. Defend myself? I didn't do oh, nothing oh, wrong. Hold on. Your mind and charm is not the highest. I'm just saying. I have one wealth. Have one? Offer everything to... Yeah, you know what? Fine. Oh, okay. I give you bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> the trial does not go well for you. And you are sentenced to perform community service. That's fine. I can go with that. Not the worst. Maybe it was that guy that was following you from the dogfighting alley. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the slums down. Let's see. I'm going to go and uh, meditate on some things right now. You spend a week in deep meditation. He's okay. just lying on a tree. That's not meditating. That's how he meditates. Well, I meditate every night then. Walking past the pond one day, you see a fat little frog sitting on a lily pad. Please, sir, the frog beds. I am not a frog at all, but an enchanted prince, Rare. If you could see your way to kissing me, it would break the curse and return me to normal. Uh, Dude, kiss the frog. Dude, kiss it. Just yeah. kiss it on its lips. You bend down and kiss the frog. Give it that. Mm. Give that. Mm. Feel curious stirring like a curse trying to break. Unfortunately, you don't seem to be magical enough to get the job done. It's your penis. It's, it's, it, it's not about how much magic you have. <laughs> it's about how you use the magic. He hops off sadly. I have a bad case of lip war. <laughs> Oh, maybe you shouldn't go around kissing frogs. And then the world was a howling fury, and Mike skipped the rest. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to the hospital, and I'm gonna. Do you think cleaning up in the hospital would be like beneficial for the patients? Because I mean, well, you want them around a sick and diseased. Right? I guess I'll tend to them then. You spend a week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mind and earn one wealth. The one wealth that I could, like, I lost. <laughs> one day, a patient comes into the hospital with sores that nobody's ever seen before. Oh. While walking by his bedside, he walks to you and rudely asks for a glass of water. Ah. Uh, he's not in good shape. He's a patient. Yeah, I'm gonna get him water. You gotta do what you have to do. You bring him a small glass to quench his thirst. He takes a large sips, uh swigs it around and then proceeds to spit at you spit at you the water hits you right in the face after cleaning up you you scold the obviously insane man for spitting at you that night when you go home you feel dizzy and start having vivid hallucinations about ancient wizards what whoa this dude has like magic spit is that like a he weird you STD? His magic his magic sickness you can't do magic. Oh, oh from him you spitting at me. Lose three mind. I lost too many mind. You lost two, three many mind. Wow. Uh, I don't even know what to feel about that. I think I just need to get away from people for a while. Oh. Yeah, it sounds like a good well, idea. Go hunting. Spend the week hunting various defenseless <laughs> critters. Makes me feel good about myself. You gain two finesse and sell the pelts for one wealth. Huh. One day, during your forced excursions, you stumble upon a swarm of rats. At first, you jump backwards in shock, but then you start to hear them conversing with one another. They call you over. Excuse me, sir, one of them says in a high-pitched voice. Do you think you might be able to help us out with something? You see, we're trying to elect a new leader, but it seems our votes are completely tied. We're trying to decide between Seedpaw the Vengeful and Blighttooth the Wise. I like those names. Seedpaw steps forward. If you vote for me, the rats will have a powerful leader, one who isn't afraid to take our fight to the enemy. Getting all political. Blighttooth steps up. I don't like his name. <laughs> Blighttooth? Yeah, like, it's a good name, but it, it just sounds so awful. If it's you vote for me, good sir, I will lead these rats to an age of enlightenment. Which rat do you choose? 
I don't like his name, but he's not a vengeful yeah. leader. Half the rats roared with a tiny applause. Sea paw bows his head and walks back into the mass of rats. Blighttooth climbs up to your shoulder and whispers ancient secrets into your ear as thanks. Gain one mind and one magic. See, I didn't lose my mind. <laughs> not like me. Like, like somebody. When it arrives this time, how will we fare? Will we once more rebuild, move on, be strong, or have we forgotten? So we just kind of know that Yogg is fucked up once before, and we're just going to let it happen again. Because you're an ancient baby demon that you, like, barreled past you. I'm going to go to the tavern. <coughs> I know nothing about bartending, so I'm going to do, I'm going to drink. Hey, you're sick. So go to a public place. Exactly. <laughs> you spend the entire week getting wasted. You gain two charm and one physique. Because of getting wasted? Over the course of a week, you notice yourself growing more and more spiral-shaped sores all over, over your body. One day, the sores begin glowing a vibrant blue. You feel your magical powers grow even stronger while your mind slips further and further. I'm turning into a magical crazy man. Yeah. You lose three mind. In no time, the sores are glowing so bright they hurt to look at. Use gunner optics. Those will, you know, clear right up. Um, Are we sponsored? <laughs> <laughs> Someone rushes you, uh, rushes up to you, asking if you're all right. With a, uh, with only a glance, you set him aflame. What the fuck, dude? I'm Cyclops. <laughs> you broke the fucking tavern. <laughs> <laughs> then you let out a scream that shakes the earth and sh shatters the skull. What? Oh my god! I'm murdering people just by like. You couldn't have been in the gardens where nobody was. You had to go to the tavern where the where the blue collar working man goes at the end of the day to a. Oh mine. my god! What's going on? A river of blood coats the ground as you walk about, reveling in your destruction. I'm you an have evil, lost your mind. I'm an evil madman. You black out. When you come to, you're at home in your bed. Your sores have faded. You feel like the disease of syndromes have passed. Oh, good news. That's good for you. <laughs> I'm cured, guys. You broke the fucking tavern. Look at the tavern. Is, is the tavern's animation always like that? No. Where it's because like... you destroyed it. Wow. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go to the gardens. So never go to a bar when your mind isn't right. That's like a lesson that you need to like take into real life. To balance out the destruction you've done, I'm going to do some landscaping to pretty up the town a little bit. <laughs> You're making a little swan. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Spend the week maintaining plants in the Royal Garden. One finesse, one physique, and I earn myself a little bit of cash. One day you come across an elderly man snoozing on the grass. You that young person. He waves over. I'm having an awful time trying to nap in the bright sun. Do you mind giving me some shade? Um... Yeah, I'll block, I'm gonna block it for the old guy. Never, never know what that feels like. Why is an old man sleeping peacefully in your shadow? Sun is sweltering, and after some hours, you begin to feel faint. I'm glad I don't have to do He's that. He's not even fair skinned. I'm not, you know, not. To, okay, I'm not even gonna touch that one. <laughs> Everything grows dark. You awaken <laughs> this evening in the garden, and an ancient gnarled tree stands where the old man was sleeping. For witnessing this miraculous event, you gain one magic. I'm getting a lot of magic too, but I don't think quite as much as you, Mr. <laughs> I lost my mind. The yogurt's almost here. Almost. Well, I won't get a drink. <laughs> I literally I destroyed the tavern. Well, I guess. Well, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna fight someone. I'm gonna make some of the worst decisions. No, I'm gonna. No, no. I'm gonna go to the slum. I'm gonna fight crime. Gotta balance out the awfulness of what you've done. Yeah, you spend a, uh, the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. You gain one mind, one physique, and one fitness. Fin fitness? Finesse. finesse. One day, while wandering the slums, you notice the stones used to line the roads seem to have a certain pattern to them. It's my weird mind, you know? You don't manage to figure out the mystery, but you still feel pretty smart for noticing the <laughs> patterns of tiles. That's because you've lost your mind. Whoa, look, it makes a smiley face. <laughs> you got one back. Well, I guess I'm not that crazy. He's like, no, they're really... Dude, there really is a smiley face. Look! Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I want to go dancing. What is that, the ball? Yeah, I think... I, I think... 
could look. Your physique and magic is ridiculous. I'm just, I'm just like all about. I'm gonna try to get some mind stuff. Where Whereas, you... you know what? I think meditating is really good for the mind. I, uh, I hear. That's what I hear. Good. Spend the week in deep meditation. Gain one magic and two mind. One day on your way home from the park, you come across a golden ring in the grass. Ooh. Sell, sell, or wear. Oh man. No, why? Why not? Upon placing the ring on your finger, orange glowing markings appear on the outside of the band. Oh, good lord. It's a good the... sign. All right. It's, from... the, it's the one ring. <laughs> the markings unravel themselves from a ring and swirl in front of you. It's the fucking, it's the one ring. They form into what appears to be a fully armored ghost what? radiating a beautiful orange light. The ghost turns to you and nods before walking away. The ring looks good on you. Get one charm. What? A storm arrives in the night. By the morning, it still rages. For three full days, the tempest puts us through a grinder. Drowns us, crushes us, ruins us. But then it ends. We see the graveyard our home has become. Our home. Does anything yet live? Is it? Are we? Past saving. Oh my god! So, choose your role. So, hold to the right, and you can see the green. Those are your stats there. Whatever you feel best suited for. I'm gonna go with the builder. Look at me. Let me, let me carry wood. So you take it upon yourself to help rebuild the town ha by hand. You rebuild homes at breakneck speed, impressing the rest of the survivors. Yeah, yeah you're really strong. <coughs> but I, I also have uh, magic, so it's like that's why I'm carrying even more. I'm like Ant-Man. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. All right, did a good job. So what? A, what? I, I, I'm, I've got the mind for stuff. Doctor. A little bit charming. I, I, I wouldn't go... I think you would need a little bit more charm. The leader. leader. I think I'd need a little bit more charm. You know, I'd be a politician. So I think I'll, I'm not going to go town drunk. Because you killed the tavern. I know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I destroyed the tavern. I don't got the magic. I'm going to go with doctor. Is what in right? the hell? Take it upon yourself to help the sick and injured from the yog. You're able to fix up most of your patients in no time at all. This means there are more people to help with rebuilding the town. Ah oh, yeah. This helps the survival effort considerably. We did good. And so, we set about our tasks. Once more living our lives, this time in a way we might never have expected or even wanted. But in the end, we flourished. Towers once wrecked and ravaged rose towards the sky. Trees again took root and blossomed. We all blossomed. And like the show? Though it took a long while. <laughs> And though it took a lot from all of us, our future is bright. Should the Yogg ever return, we will be ready. Nice, this is actually the best ending I've ever gotten on this game. Like, we, uh, we totally, like, owned the, uh, the Yogg. Yeah, I got one where it's like, we did not, it's like, no. The town ended up being abandoned. With the town rebuilt, you spend nearly all your time in the Alchemy Tower. Oh, that's you, Mr. Magic Dude. Because I had to, like, nothing else better to do. Like, my mind is all messed up. I'm the weird guy. In the tower, I lock myself up there because I'm too like scared that I might break stuff. Yeah, you you try to search for a cure for those mysterious spiral sore disease that caused you to hurt all those people. All that time in the lab begins taking a toll on your body. Ooh, they're beginning oh, to no. surface, Mike. No, 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 no. Not wanting to repeat the past, you walk out to the docks and jump into the water. Whoa! Swim out as far as but possible. really, that's, that's the way. A faint explosion was spotted on the lake that night. Did it just blow my- Some say it was the birth of a new star, Mike. I No, I just blew myself up. I just blew You're myself into the lake. A shining star. <laughs> I don't believe that. After the town is rebuilt, you go back to meditating in the park. I did do a lot of that. <laughs> you spend weeks at a time sitting in one spot, trying to cross to another plane of existence. After years of attempts and self-sacrifice, you finally manage to cross over to the Astral Realm. You come to find that the Astral Realm is exactly like the normal world, except everyone's eyes are slightly smaller. <laughs> you don't know how to get back home. Did you really just, like, cross over? You weren't, you went, <laughs> you thought, you, you, you <laughs> thought so hard, oh my God. you meditated so hard, you entered a wormhole. This game is awesome. A parallel universe. This game is awesome. I, I, I do love the art, and yeah. Because before we played, we played this. There was like so many different things that occurred that just like it brought up like different reactions. Like what? Yeah, it's different like every time. So, all right. Thanks for following us, everybody. 
This is, uh, yeah, that's Mike. This is the Atrium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Mike, this is Jay, this is, this is the Atrium Podcast, or the Atrium Play. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know how to sign out. See, I just... you, see you later, everybody. <laughs>